Okay guys, so it's time for an upgrade to my fleshing board. Um, this is the first one I made out of a uh, 2x6. I cut this into a point and then just rounded it on a belt sander, but um, it's made out of pine, so it's real soft, and you can see all the nicks that I have in it. Um, and you can see these two streaks running down the center here. Uh, that's because when I use my necker knife, I'm typically using the uh, the dull side with this curvature on it. And when I push, when I get down to this area uh, and I'm pushing, you can see it just pushes on those two spots where uh, where it's all worn down. Um, when I'm up here, it's okay because I have the arc that I need, but uh, I didn't continue that arc. So I'm going to upgrade and... Um, the other day, I was uh, going down the road and I saw some construction going on where they were pulling out this PVC piping. Um, this is what I'm going to make my new flushing beams out of. Um, this, what I have here is 12 inch PVC. Uh, I think you can use 10 to 12, it's probably okay. Um, what you're looking for is the, ang or the arc. Uh, with respect to your necker knife, especially on the dull side, because that's what you're using most often. Um, and you can see how if we had a pelt on there, uh, that would increase the diameter a little bit. And you get you get a lot of coverage when you're uh, when you're pushing. So you can move, remove a lot of flesh, but you can also get the pressure you want in one area. Um, if there's a tough spot so that's why uh, I'm using 12 inch um, so if you find 10 or 12 inch PVC that somebody's throwing out um, that that's what you're looking for if you want to make PVC flushing boards okay so to start out um, I traced this make stretching board on here I want one I want a flushing beam uh, specifically for mink I have enough PVC here to do it so if I'm gonna make one, I might as well make a, one uh, that's a little smaller and I can actually use solely for mink. So I got that one, that one already uh, traced out. All right, so I'm gonna just use the uh, this jigsaw and uh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, that's most of it, and uh, I'll just trim off where I where I didn't get here. Um, so all I have to do next is just round off the edges. So, if you look at that, <clears throat> if you look at that, I got it pretty rounded out all the way down. Um, pretty happy with that. So, 
I think that'll work. I might t touch it up with some other sandpaper, but look at look at the bow in it. Um, I'm gonna have to stiffen this up somehow so that it stays straight uh, and probably gives me a little bit better stability when I'm actually fleshing. This is just 150 grit sandpaper. I'm just touching up the edges here. Mainly just so fat and stuff doesn't catch on there. Once I got rid of the edges and they were rounded a bit, that, that's going to stop, you know, any kind of tearing of the flesh. But this uh, this stuff is still a little bit of rough, a little bit rough. But this is I think 60 grit on my. <clears throat> on my belt sander so if I get some of that off when I flush it the the fat that's falling off the sides won't stick there and flip off easier that's the only reason I'm sanding this down a little bit more That should do it. Okay, so this was my solution to the PVC bending and kind of twisting a little bit. Um, I fastened a 2x2 two two to the back of it. Uh, I put in the front, I, I tapered this back so that uh, when I stretch a mink on there, it won't hit this uh, and it'll allow it to stretch over that. Um, I fastened, I just used screws that I knew could go through the wood and then not puncture through the back of this um, and then on the, even on these couple back here I needed to use uh, double washers there so I, I just did it in four different places basically down the line and then at the end I left the tail so that I'll be able to fasten this into something either some kind of base or the wall and uh, and I'll be able to change it out with the mink board or the the next one that I'm gonna make so I'm gonna get started on the next one okay so the next one I'm gonna make is uh, this is a coon stretching board I'm gonna make it the size of a coon stretching board so that I know coons gonna fit on it beaver will definitely fit because those are, aren't case skin um, you know a coyote a fox will might be a little skinny so I think I might um, end up doing it one last one might have three uh, a little bit skinnier for muskrat and fox, um, but I'm gonna work on the coon one next, so I'm gonna trace it out. Alright, so that one's cut out. I can shape it with a belt sander and uh, round off the edges. Alright, so you can see it's pretty well 
rounded off, no sharp edges, and this one, up there, a um, lot stiffer, and it's pretty straight. Looks pretty good. Um, so I probably won't have to back this one like I did the last one uh, because it's so much wider. It has a lot more stability to it. So again, I'm going to touch it up with this uh, 150 sandpaper just around so that fat falls off of it and stuff like that. Um, that's basically the only reason. So that the skin doesn't catch on any of the rough edges and the fat can slide right off into whatever my bucket sits underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this. Okay, so uh, I added this 2x2 two two tail on this one. Um, because I wanted to match this. Uh, I think I'm gonna make uh, some kind of base, either that goes against the wall or something like that. It, this, I'll make a pocket and this will just slip in there and I'll be able to interchange these pretty easily and um, hang them up on the wall, get them out of the way, so. All right, so I figured you guys didn't need to watch me cut out and sand another uh, flushing beam out of PVC, so I started on my pocket. Um, this is what I got so far. It's all made out of two by fours. These two spacers here are three inches long. These outside pieces are uh, seven and a half inches, which gives me one and a half inches by one and a half inch pocket. So my two by two fits right down in there pretty well. Um, I will be able to tighten these spacers up this way. Uh, tighten them in as tight as I want to go this way. Um, however, when I tighten these down, there's still a little wiggle room back and forth this way. So I think I am going to have to sand uh, a little bit of this space off on both of these spacers so that fits a little bit more snug. Um, the next thing I did was I set, I needed to figure out what angle I wanted um, my beams to be at. So I could angle this box in this pocket in that angle. Uh, so basically I just kind of set it here uh, at an angle that I kind of feel comfortable. I like it pretty far up and down because I can use my body weight to flesh instead of my muscles. Um, so I, I set it where I like it, I held it there, and I took this piece of wood, this piece of scrap wood, and I traced that same angle. It turns out that angle is 60, 60 degrees. I then cut two pieces off at 60 degrees. So I take these wedges and I'm just gonna fasten them to the bottom here so that I get my angle I want there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and get some of that stuff done and I'll get back with you. All right, so I got the pocket finished, uh, all put together, and when I put the flushing beam in it, it fits in there pretty snug. I'm pretty happy with that fit. Um, so the next thing is to put my wedges in, and I decided that this these wedges were too small, so I made new ones. Um, and I'm just going to zip them in like this. Hopefully they don't split on me. We'll see.
right. So there we go. Now this comes out at the angle we were looking for. All right, so uh, I just cut this 12 inch long two by four and I'm gonna fasten it to the back um, on those flat surfaces there of the wedges. All right, so the reason I put that, that board on the back there is so that I can fasten it into here. Um, anything like that, I can fasten it into. And now that slides in there. And it's at my 60 degree angle. It's pretty sturdy. I think when I get on it and start to flesh down, uh, it feels pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with it. I can put bucket, bucket over here, and all my fleshings will fall into those buckets. So that's that's the finished product there. Thanks for watching.